You guys, I really need to decompress here. We just spent days traveling here to Bali with the family. Whoa. It's been a couple of months, let me tell you, since we've been without our boat home. We set up our old boat for charter. We went up for a trip to the Arctic. It was so epic, but I'm ready to be in one spot for a while and we've just landed in Asia. I wanted to sing you a song about the trip, actually. <laughs> oh, and we're about to see our new trimaran that's being built. We haven't seen it yet. We're nervous, but also really excited. Obviously, this is gonna be our new home. Yeah, good times ahead. In the meantime, it's been a time, let me tell you. I did want to mention quickly a little something about cultural appropriation, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that later. We do have the ability to change the thumbnail. So I just wanted to quickly mention that before Elena gets on with the song. We wanted to sneak that in early. Yeah, what do you guys think about the thumbnail? Is it appropriate or not? I thought we're in the Southern Hemisphere I dropped the act and accepted a trip was hell They acted like animals and wouldn't sleep They strolled the air hostesses and me Our boat is nearly complete. It is a 60 foot carbon trimaran, which we hope will sail us around the world for the next 20 years, 30 years. We have some really big plans for this vessel and what we might be able to accomplish on board. But in the meantime, we need to set up a sort of a home base for the time that we're gonna be spending in Southeast Asia. We're going to need access to boat parts, schooling, community, and social connection. We've been sailing around the world for the last eight years now, and we know that life is much easier if you have a familiar place to return to occasionally. We're here now wondering if Bali will be that next spot for us. Well, we gave ourselves the best chance at getting any sleep this morning by going to the gym, and we're about to hop in an Uber and go to the airport. Oh, and I made the biggest mistake of trying to wash clothes last night. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, and now I have like... That was so... Uh, when you were doing that, oh, I didn't say... Well, I forgot what time our flight was today. I thought it was like an afternoon flight, and that the clothes would have time to dry. Anyway, when we get to Bali, to humid Bali, I'm gonna have the stinkiest suitcase you've ever smelled in your life. My mate finished playing football in the winter and then threw his Guernsey in the corner and he didn't go and get it again until the next season. And he put oh. it on and on the first run at football, that's the worst smell I've ever smelled oh. in my life. Yuck. Paddy Walton. Anyway, join us for the journey. One flight of 14 hours and 50 minutes and then another flight of four hours and five minutes. The only other really bad smell I've smelt was there was a dead hamster. It had oh. fallen into a fish pond. What's and that the worst stank. smell you guys have ever smelled? What's your worst smell you've ever smelt? <laughs> <I'm on. laughs> of course we forgot to book an outgoing flight. At least Darwin's having a nap. We actually got super lucky on this flight. A bunch of premium seats had no power going to them, so the air hostesses were nice enough to move us. Super kind of them. The flight was much more bearable with seats that went all the way down. I'd never had this experience in my whole life, and it was going to be really hard to go back to economy after this. We're laughing at old videos of Lady he couldn't eat. Elena had trouble breastfeeding him early on and he was really skinny there. She felt so guilty about that. She fed him like anything. And then from when he's about one onwards, he's so fat. <laughs> I would just feed him every time he cried. I was like, just food, food, food. <laughs> one flight down, one to go.
I had been stressing about that for so long. I knew Elena was stressing so much about it, like much more than any sale. So we've done that, we're in Bali. It's really hot, but I feel like from here we can slow down a bit, take a deep breath and um, yeah. Every time it's been difficult, I've always said to Elena, it's okay. We're going to the promised land, which is Bali. Thank yeah, you. Lord. We're finally arrived in the promised land and it's here the smile on his face. I'm very pleased with myself. <laughs> you must get a lot of this in Bali. People <laughs> vlogging. Welcome to Ramayana Sweet Resort. Have a nice day with us. Not only could that trip not have been smoother, but I've just pulled out the wet clothes and they don't stink at all. Smell them. It's not so bad at all. Let us know if there's a scientific explanation for this. Yeah, is it if, if you zip lock something, air, is it air, if it's airtight, can it not grow bacteria or something? <laughs> Travel hack right here. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Let's go find some breakfast. It's the most beautiful morning, a little bit of rain, it's just magic. I haven't felt this tropical weather for years and years. It's a wild on my leg. On the floor. So, Lenny's sick. We didn't get to film any of the administering prednisone in the taxi or it was a feel sick moment where neither of us wanted to film i've been sleeping down here lenny's been here screaming for her basically lenny has a pretty small airway so he's prone to getting croup anytime he gets a respiratory virus it got really bad in our car ride from our temporary hotel we stayed in last night to here which is our villa we'll be staying in for the next two weeks it was a pretty shitty day Is it? Mm, oops. No. Mm -mm. Also, this house is so beautiful. I can't wait to show you it when the sun comes up. Welcome to Changu, a hotspot on the island for digital nomads. Due to its fast internet speeds, incredible shared workplaces, cheap gym and sauna memberships, and enough healthy food to feed your soul forever. Oh, and there's great surf nearby. We really looked forward to meeting some new friends here. Friends that also made up their own work hours and had a flexible schedule. I guess that's another plus this place had over Australia or the Bahamas where we've land-based ourselves in the past. We knew that on average, we'd have a lot more in common with the people living here. So one of the main reasons that I wanted to come here is just very practical. The economy of the place, things are about one tenth as expensive here as they were in the US, which is insane <laughs> it really is so elena and i used to be able to live very frugally i'd go spear fishing we'd cook up a meal i don't know we just managed to get by on a pittance and now i just found we, we would have to fly to the us to post up somewhere for a bit to just get life maintenance stuff done dentist doctor stuff there's a whole bunch of things that you got to do with the kids and when we would go to the us a place like this a swimming pool two bedrooms might cost in Florida, eight grand for six days or something like that. Here, that would be two months. I was just, we have got to go there immediately. Drone, drone batteries. Say welcome to the rice paddy fields. Oh, oh, Once we'd all gotten over the jet lag, we planned a trip to Ubud, an hour inland from Changu where the hippies are known to hang out. We planned to scope out a few areas in Bali before we'd leave to Vietnam to be with our trimaran. We needed to know which area we wanted to come back to next time. And this is Melly, the most beautiful Indonesian woman who offered to help us out with the kids, which was so needed, especially whilst they were sick and we understandably couldn't send them to any school here just yet. We love her already. Where are you from? 
I, I'm from Sumatra. How many years have you been watching kids? Uh, almost eight years. Wow. Yeah. And why? Do you just like kids? Yeah, I like to play with them. Yeah, yeah they like to play with them. <laughs> and where have you travelled in the world? I've been Australia too, USA, Thailand, Singapore. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's it. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm from Italy. You're from Italy? I'm, I'm from Australia. Oh, yeah. oh, you're from Australia. <laughs> yeah. Today we decided to make a trip out to the Tagalalang rice paddy fields. It's supposed to be the most beautiful on the island. Is it the most beautiful? I think it's the most beautiful. We haven't really seen it yet, but I've just flown the drone and it looks stunning. This is our friend Ryan. How you going, mate? Hi, friends. I'm doing well. What brings you to Bali? I moved to Bali a year ago uh, to pursue my passions in photography and videography. My own YouTube channel just got monetized, which is really Yay! cool. <laughs> Check it out. Ryan Lee Banks. <laughs> Rice is a staple food in Bali and has strong ties to the Balinese culture. The Balinese community views rice as a gift from God and a symbol of life. For thousands of years, the Balinese people have been growing rice and cultivating the beautiful rice terraces of Bali. One rice terrace in Bali is so unique, it even made it on the UNESCO World Heritage Sites list. Interestingly though, although it may look like the farming of rice might contribute hugely to the island's economy, it's actually tourism related business that makes up 80% of what's being brought in. I did want to talk about cultural appropriation, how I think about it, and then where I think that we sit along a sliding scale. That's how I like to think about it. Not even an extreme example, but an example which would be over here. Let's call him a douchebag, frat dude, who's uh, drunk, behaving like a goose, and appropriating culture. Over here, on the other side, you've got someone that is appropriating culture, maybe imitating it in a very respectful manner. But you could say that that's what well, it's still on the scale, you know what I mean? I think it's respect is the thing that I'm thinking about. And the other things that would impact on that, the style of movie that you make. If we can take uh, the Australian Bogan, for example, a, a really interesting character in the social milieu of Australia, if he were to make a movie, you can imagine him smoking a cigarette, cruising around in a singlet, then it would come off quite bad. Maybe I'm wrong, educate me. So tell me what you think and why. Let me know in the comments below and I'll read every single one. Maybe we can organize a bit of a vote down there and then maybe we change the, the thumbnail or maybe we don't. If you're one of those people that like, hates the woke mob, tell me why because um, I'm interested in that as well. I'll be jumping into the comments section after this video. I'm really looking forward to it. So every morning, first thing I do, I come out here and I just go to town. I know all the places they hide now. Yeah, I kind of just give every object a nudge and then they come out. I kill them all and I'll have some time to prepare Lenny's lunch today. It's actually Lenny's first day of school. I'm really looking forward to packing him a lunchbox. This will be my first lunchbox packing as a mum. So he's very lucky. He doesn't even know it. Oh, and Darwin is going to be having his first swimming lesson in our pool here. We've got someone coming over. Sit here. Come sit next to the lady. Going to do five lessons with him, which will be super handy just to give him that little bit of a head start before we get on the trimaran and we're swimming a lot of the time. Lenny wasn't particularly fond of his new school, nor was Darwin about his swimming lessons. But we've got to be cruel to be kind sometimes. We escaped for the weekend to Uluwatu, the next place on our list to scope out. This is where all the surfers hang out, and immediately we noticed just how much more space there was to breathe out here. Having visited the three major areas we wanted to see in Bali now, we were satisfied, but we'd still need to sleep on it. One good point I brought up to Riley was that seeing as we'd be sailing on the trimaran and we'd be isolated for a lot of the year, maybe it was better that when we did come back to Bali, we lived in the busier part of the island, like Changu, where there was always something going on.
Well, this is exciting. We've made the decision on whether or not we're going to make our land base Bali or Australia. A lot of you already know that. We used to go back to Australia once a year just to maintain that connection with our friends and family and have that sense of community and familiarity. Everyone needs that. I think our kids need that. Just a place to return to where they see familiar faces. That's all we want. Honestly, the quality of life here, the quality of food, um, the people, the culture, it's incredible. It has like exceeded my expectations. Honestly, this place is so livable. Just like that, we've just erased any idea of having ties with Australia in that way. And yeah, Bali is going to be that land home that we come back to. So we'd love to sail for 70% of the year. And then the rest of that time, we'll come back here, put the boys in the school and um, just give them their little social fix that they need. Yeah, this is a really exciting day. We were wondering if this could be the place and it is it's it's a relief really woohoo and just as we started to get comfortable here we packed up again but i'm not complaining tomorrow we'd be en route to vietnam why are you excited because yeah. we're going on an adventure <laughs> are you excited melly yeah yeah <laughs> We're only four hours early. Riley always thinks that I'm like a rusher. When it comes to travel, I definitely love to be way too early. But before, he was just being smart about our flight. And I was like, we should go now. He's like, we've got 10 minutes and it's on the last call and we're going to be late. How are your anxiety levels? Very appropriate. <laughs> Very appropriate. It's on last call right now. Melly doesn't have a care in the world right now. She's just like looking out the window with Darwin. We're all waiting for her. I don't have a care in the world either. You guys know how long we've waited for this damn moment. To lay eyes on this vessel we've been dreaming about and planning for years now. It didn't feel real for the whole five hour journey over. You happy little man? Yeah? I don't even know if I want it. This is too intense. Oh my gosh. This one? Yes. Oh, it's massive. It's huge. That is the biggest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> That's so That is huge. 